Welcome to Anime Adventures, bringing you an exclusive KameaCon online panel and interview. I am your host, Elise Bowman, and I'm the voice of Pan on Dragon Ball GT. Anime Adventures is a show where I bring you interviews with actors, artists, and others in the anime world. And this exclusive KameaCon online panel is brought to you by ConLive, the company that brings you the experience of a live convention right into the comfort of your own home. Now, today's interview is with professional artists artist Ken Salinas. He specializes in design and illustration. He is nationally published. He's got t-shirts on Amazon. He does so many cool things. So we're going to talk all things art. Let's bring him on right now. It's Ken Salinas. How you doing? Ken, it's so great to have you here. I can't wait to talk about some of your artwork because, man, I, I feel like you've done so many different things with so many different mediums. Can you explain a little bit about what you do and so give us kind of an overview of your artwork and all the different things that you have done and you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. I know that's a lot. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. And, and first off, thanks for having me on Con Live and and, uh, and doing this. I mean, this is absolutely great. Um, you know, I, yeah. I've been doing this uh, professionally or uh, just as an artist for the last five, almost five and a half years. Mm. And uh, so that's been it's definitely been a ride. There's been a lot of learning, a lot of ups and downs, especially with this past year. Also, you know, uh, and uh, I. I was blessed enough to be asked to do 22 pieces for the first Kamehameha Con uh, that me, I helped do. It was me and two other people. That was a lot of pieces. So we all kind of collaborated together yeah. and uh, uh, to be able to come up with all the pieces and uh, get them out uh, for the convention, you know, and to be there. And I tell you what, the first time at an all Dragon Ball Z convention, oh my God, like what an amazing day i mean the fact that you know you people yelling and screaming all day long and oh my gosh it was just amazing it, i mean what it's amazing and kind of electrifying isn't it yeah yeah it was, it was it was different you know and i had done conventions for years before that and you know you yeah. got everything which was cool and seeing this actually come to life you know and it being like nothing but it just blew my mind i mean it, what a community what a great community. It's such a, I mean, you're right. Like Kamehakan 1, I just came for a couple hours. Kamehakan 2, I was there the whole time, of course. And you're right, there's such an energy. It is, it's so hard to explain unless you're there. And mm -hmm. we should say you have announced that you're going to be there at Kamehakan 3 in July. Yeah. Yes, we've got some new stuff coming out this year for, for July. And I'm stoked, yeah. I'm so stoked ready to start doing shows again you know i mean i miss it i miss the i, I do i miss the crowd interaction i mean that's something that mm -hmm. it, it's it's helped me do what i do for the last few years and there's so much that needs to happen between an artist and a fan or a supporter and it means a lot you know when someone likes your artwork that just loves you know the genre itself so i mean yeah you know to get back out there and as an artist we kind of wear our feelings on our on our sleeve and you know on our shoulder or whatever but it's uh you know getting that feedback it's a necessity it really is you know like, do you like it or is it horrible you know <laughs> and so well i would think being an artist is similar to being a voice actor many times we're just in the booth not getting the fan interaction many times i would think you're just at home doing the artwork so to be at a convention it's, it's a similar experience. You actually get to talk to the people who watch the shows and and love, you know, the, the shows, the genre. So I hadn't really thought about that before, but I love the interaction probably for the right. same reasons you do. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it justifies what we do for a living, you know, that someone does enjoy it, someone does see it, someone, you know, you're not good sitting in the room, you know, getting it done, you know, so, but yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and you know, with this past year, it, it's it's been really strange. I had a few shows, uh, a, a few of them were uh, Christmas shows, 
Um, you know, so it was different going into knowing, you know, mask wearing and, you know, making sure that, you know, everybody was uh, sitting there having, uh, uh, you know, your alcohol stuff and, and what have you. And it, yeah. but it was amazing. And getting there was actually, I felt way safer than I thought I was once I actually got out there. And really? It was, great. it was really, really great. Um, I, there was no time that I feel awkward or strange. You had people that policed everything that was, hey, make sure you, you if you were eating something, hey, make sure you put it back on or whatever. And uh, like I said, stations everywhere. Me personally, I had sanitizer mm -hmm. on my desk. You know, I, I would sanitize every time someone would even use my phone to charge or to sign their signature. And I mean, what what a learning experience, you know. But again, yeah. getting back to Kamehameha Three, just stoked to get back out there. You know, I was there for for the first two, and you know, I mean, I can only hope and pray that we get the you know the people that we did for the first couple you know but with everything it's like still you know just excited to do whatever we can it's a different world you know i should take a moment and say people who are watching if you have questions for ken definitely drop it in the chat we have somebody moderating who is going to help us oh <laughs> we've got somebody saying hi to you joey ken what's up bro but yeah ask a question now i do want to back up a moment um, because you are nationally published and I probably just have a short list of some of your work and so I'm going to read it. I'm, I have a cheat sheet. Uh, okay. You've done comic books, illustrated short stories, abstract landscape pieces, pop culture fan art prints. You have t-shirt designs on Amazon. You've, I, I know that you've been doing 3D printings. I don't even know what you call that. I know I've seen a picture of a C-3PO. I'm a Star Wars fan. You've done you. so much. I've been on your Instagram and you've got amazing, I think you do watercolor as well. Talk about yeah. some of the artwork that you do and maybe some of the things we can expect to see when we do see you at a convention. Yeah, actually, I've got uh, a few of the pieces here that I work with, uh, both Skylar Patridge and Danny Dale Carroll. Um, yeah. and, and I did the color work on these. So basically what would happen here um, was they they did line work on here and I went through and I did the color work. Um, oh, you did? I love these that. were done digitally, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. But um, being able to get that watercolor-esque or that splatter look that I liked with, oh, the actual, uh, with it being actual digital was a little tough but loads of fun you know to be able to come up with the, with the design yeah we can actually get a good view of those wow he really enjoys so you did the color work, work on all of these that you're showing I us i did i did like every single one of these and is this watercolor or you did the color work digitally those, were, actually on, digital. new those were on a computer so i actually did on computer. yeah so i i did that i've got uh, a couple of books that I've done. This one was called The Forgotten Isle. I did the cover on this actual book here. Oh, wow. The horror book. And I kind of wanted it to go back to where the old creep show style. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Julie. Uh, the creep show style cover on this. This was released for uh, a, a mystery box, real similar to like your loot crate. It was called Zobi. And uh, so that was an exclusive I did for them. That's another comic that I did. Um, oh man, wow. Here, which was recent. Another digital one here. Another comic, The Forgotten Isle. Again, another horror. That's so thing. cool. So, so a wide variety cool. of work that you've done. You yeah. know, I know you also do shirts as well. So can we talk about some of the shirts that you've done? I think we even have a graphic. Oh, there it is. Yeah, and so cool. these are some of the shirts you have on Amazon. Can you talk about those? That was pretty neat to be able to get to do this. Uh, there's a little bit of a process because you have to apply to be a merchant for Amazon. Um, the pictures that you're putting on there or, or uploading to it itself uh, it, it goes to a, I guess, like a, they, they research it, make sure nothing's out there. There's no copyright issues, uh, things like that before they sell it because Amazon actually makes it. They print it, they ship it, they do everything. I do nothing with it except do the design, which is great. Um, yeah. And at that point, they, at, at the back end, of course, they send me royalties for it. 
but to be able to sit here and say, hey, you can just go to Amazon. You can just type in Ken R. Salinas. Boom, my shirts pop up. You know, in right now, I think I have five different designs up there. So again, you know, coming toward the end of last year into this year, uh, that's something new that's been out there. So and those have moved pretty neat. And uh, apparently they're, uh, they're they're really soft. The shirt, you know, it's the high quality, you know, so it's, it's not your cheap, cheap shirt. So people say that it feels really good. Uh, so really excited about that. So that that took a little bit. And, you know, I was so stoked yeah. when I got my first, you know, yeah, you, you got it, you know, and you can start uploading things and, and I'm limited. I can only do so many at a time. Oh, and, okay. Uh, but, you know, the longer you go, that it gets bigger and bigger as far as what, what's out there. So that's exciting. I wish that's I would have started five years ago, you know, who knows what we well, out there doing. When you know better, you do better. <laughs> you yeah, add stuff. But you answered my question, how how to look up the shirt. So you just type in mm -hmm. Ken R. Salinas. Yeah, that's it. Just Amazon and Ken R. Salinas and, and they're right there. Well, and it kind of leads me to my next question. How do people find you? Because I know you will do, you take commissions and yep. then you also sell stuff. So how do we find you on Instagram, Facebook, your website? Yeah, again, going back to Ken R. Salinas, on, on Facebook, on Instagram, I've tried to keep it the same. So you can look at me there. Uh, you can absolutely private message me if there's anything uh, interested in. Uh, I've done stuff from logo design work to, of course, commissions uh, mm -hmm. and pricing. Of course, it depends on whether I can sell pieces later. Uh, usually that's a little bit less expensive or if it's a one off somebody that it's just going to be for you, nobody else, totally private for you to get it done. It's a little bit higher in your tier. But, uh, you know, I mean, at, at the same time, just, you know, willing to work with anybody that wants to show support. Um, I do, as a hobby, the 3D printing that you were talking about. Yes. Uh, it's actually, my 3D printer is right behind me in this room. And uh, I, I have sold some things that people have asked me for on there, but I'll be real honest, the, the work that goes into it. I really love the hobby. I don't like the manufacturing aspect of building stuff for somebody else because of the time it takes, you know. But, okay. um, you know, again, with everything else, of course, everything can be talked about and <laughs> go from there. But uh, <laughs> it takes a long time. That see, I did a full size C3PO uh, and it stands five foot seven, you know, as wow. far as the, the, it itself. And it's life size. And it, just printing it took me right about 760 hours just to print. Wow. That was no sanding, no painting, no, that was Whoa. just to print it before any gluing or anything like that. And it's the biggest model that you could ever think of, like, like a car model that you buy at the store, you know. But imagine it life size and imagine no instructions. It's just piece after piece and you got to figure out where everything goes, so. That's crazy. And yeah, when I first saw your picture with C-3PO in the background, I just thought you had bought the C-3PO. I, I had no idea until I heard one of your interviews that you actually did that on a, a, a 3D printer. Like that is crazy. And by the way, I should say, if you're watching this live right now, we did put links in the comments below this live video if you want to link to some of his stuff and find him online. Um, because man, you really, you know, besides the anime artwork that you've done, you've done such a cool variety of stuff. Thank and you. I know I've heard you talk about just, you are into geek culture in general. Yes, like uh, yeah. I still collect comic books. Um, I, I have some sitting, you know, that came out last week right here, you know, I mean, uh, I still do that. I, I absolutely love, here recently, I have an 11 year old son and mm -hmm. he's starting to get more into the anime. So, of course, I have to sit there and watch which ones he's looking at, you know, kind of steer it this way or that way. But, yes. you know, at the same time, it's like, oh, this one's cool or that one's cool. And uh, so it's neat because he's kind of my muse, too, for a younger generation. Because yeah. Oh, yeah. I see what's hip or what's cool and what video games is he into and I'll do pieces and lo and behold, you know, younger crowd members are like, Oh my God, I need to have this. And it's thankfully, you know, uh, that I have him kind of showing me what's cool for the younger 
crowd, you know, so that's cool. Oh, that's true. That that comes in handy. It does. It really does. Now, you know what I would love to hear, because I know that you, you've been doing this professionally in five or six years, and you used to travel all the time, going to Comic Cons and fashion shows and movie premieres and all of these different things. Will you talk about what life was like before the pandemic and then how you had to shift your business like so many of us have had to do like how yeah. what was it like before and then how did you make that shift and adapt your business in this past absolutely. year absolutely that it was absolutely crazy and busy you know um i went full time and started getting busy doing shows and in, in we would do movie premieres. I say we because at, at, there was a point in time where I wanted to be at more movie theaters and be different places. So the only thing I think was we'll get more people to help you and let's all do this stuff. Mm. And we did. And it was amazing. We had so much fun. You know, we were different parts of the country. You know, when I have, you know, full size you know, 40 inch, 50 inch posters with our artwork hanging in lobbies. It's like our own gallery, yeah. you know, and you know, you show up in Des Moines, Iowa, or you show up in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, or, you know, Dallas or whatever. And it's just like, oh my gosh, it's like home away from home. And they made us feel like that as well. So, yeah. you know, we did that this last year, or actually, I'm sorry, this, yeah, this last year we were scheduled uh, for 18 movie premieres by itself for the year Whoa. and that's four days each so you can imagine that was just that not including uh our conventions so we were right wow. about 45 shows uh for 45 weekends basically that we were going to be on the road or be somewhere doing something this past year that's crazy because of COVID and everything that happened, I ended up doing six shows. So it's a big difference to go from that many to six. And I've yeah. done three in the past two months. So, you know, again, it's one of those things where it was just, there was the longest, usually that January, February, there's really nothing going on. And yeah. then everything kind of ramps up from there. And uh, so that's what had happened to us was we had a couple of shows, January, February, and then that was it, you know? March, everything shut down on the 15th. You know, I was actually at a Chris's show, set up, ready to go. And about an hour before the show, they said, we'll cancel, bring it down. And we had to bring everything down. Oh, and, uh, gosh. So, it, big difference, but. Yeah, big difference. You know, at, at the same time, I, I was able to do a lot of things this year. It opened up the doors for being published. I, I actually, with it being a uh a, an election year actually i ended up doing a political book which was crazy that was great that i got hired on to do that it was fun it was just poking fun of the politicalness of of everything that was going on before the election yeah. and uh you know so at least that was done so i can say you know gosh i did a national book as well as several comic books you know and, and put the, all that out there the t-shirt stuff again it was trying to learn all these different things and just make make that artwork continually get out there and just promote it so it's been good wow so yeah sometimes there are silver linings even in a situation we didn't necessarily want to be in all of us have learned new things now mm -hmm. one thing i also want to ask you because i've heard you say that you love that you're able to do this professionally and that you were able i think you started five or six years ago if you had some advice to give to artists or really anybody who wanted to pursue their passion and do it full time, what advice would you give? The biggest thing is never quit learning uh, what you're doing because the, I've learned so much just this past year too. You know, it, it's constantly evolving. It, it's something, if you're passionate about doing it, then your studies, your free time, and you know, that needs to be involved in, in doing it. Uh, I still to date watch you know, people drawing and painting and different techniques on YouTube. And, you know, oh. I, I sit there and I'm like, oh, I'm going to try that next time. You know, that, that looks easier than the way I'm doing it. You know, and, and it's just constant <laughs> yeah. learning, uh, you know, and, and, and that's that's for anything. You know, I try to push that to my young son. also. Uh, even though he's only 11, I try to explain to him, everybody that 
that you or everything you see out there someone had a passion to do that whether it was the guy that wrote your math book he was passionate enough about math to sit there and do the lessons and put it in there history same thing to the artwork to the animes you know to the the, the voice actors you know i mean it's just there's so many options as long as you're passionate you need to surround yourself with that you know and, and definitely pursue it that's so true i i love that you're absolutely right no matter what it is just throw yourself into it and work hard yeah. well hey it's been so much fun visiting Thank with you, you. And remember if you want to follow ken ken r oh, salinas basically everywhere in the world wide web thank you so much ken this has been thank fun you for having me thanks con life i appreciate y'all having me thank you yeah thank you thanks for joining us live and thank you for joining us on anime adventures if you're watching this later we'll see you later bye bye